Hey y'all, it's Tasha with Pine Knot Family Farm. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new, thank you for subscribing. And today we're gonna to be doing our first official garden tour of the 2021 season. Um, if you've caught my garden tours in the previous years, it's not gonna look like it does then. Right now, um, we've had a whole lot of rain the last three or four weeks. We've had some cooler temperatures in the evening. It's just not got real hot yet. And I've got a huge pest pressure already. It is, uh, it's pretty intense. Normally, I'm not seeing this kind of pest pressure until the middle or the end of gardening season. I've got slugs, hornworms, it's all kinds of stuff already really giving me a tough time and I'm putting out stuff I'm spraying the organic stuff and just nothing is helping that would normally help in the past with the issues it's just not even touching it so but we're gonna get started with the garden tour today we live in northeast Arkansas we're in growing zone 7b we've got a pretty long growing season so uh, even though we're kind of behind schedule on everything this year getting started we've got I think 210 day growing season so we've got a lot of days to work with. We actually just got our corn in the ground two or three days ago. So we'll get started. I'm gonna show y'all the greenhouse. It is a mess. It's been a mess all year. It's, it's a disaster. And behind me, I have got um, some tomatoes that I started. I'm gonna have to replace the two that the hornworms are already stripping the leaves on because I think it's it's gotten too bad that it's just, I'm gonna have to replace the whole plant. But uh, this is an Abe Lincoln. And then I've got several pepper plants that I'm just gonna end up giving away. Uh, I don't really wanna plant too much more. This year, I'm not gonna do as large of a garden as I've done in the past. I kinda wanna just take the summer and enjoy it a little bit more, go to the lake and not have just the pressure of having to make sure and get everything preserved. And we'll just do an overview of the garden. new to the channel make sure and go check out one of my previous garden tours I'll try to link one um, up here in the corner and hopefully I can get this garden in shape and looking like it did in the previous years but I got a lot of work ahead of me this raised bed over here we've just got some broccoli that within the last day has went to flower uh, we did these are just little broccoli Florence is all that it produced but I need to come and pick these off just for a salad got some strawberries growing just in some little kitty swimming pools here this one is the Ozark Beauty and this is the TriStar strawberry that's new varieties for me so throughout this video you will notice all kinds of random pavers laying around it wasn't just three weeks ago we got a really late frost uh, the, al the farmer's almanac predicted our last frost date to be April 4th and I think right at the end of April we got two days where we got a pretty hard freeze so I was out here trying to get everything covered the best that I could I was putting pots over it and just putting a brick on top because on top of that we had 30 mile an hour winds and I just haven't had a chance to get all these bricks picked up yet here on both sides of the trellis we've got some Kentucky Wonder pole beans you see we've got a little bit of some pest pressure going on here. Not too bad. Overall, they look pretty good. Uh, just two days ago, they were right here. And once they grab a hold of this trellis, they take off. I mean, look how far this has made it. You can see over here, they're just starting to grab to the first one. So it will be amazing by next week how this will look. And down here, we've got some cantaloupes. Got a little bit more pest you can see here. These are 
the Kajari melons I got from the Stivers. I didn't save any of my seeds for some reason last year. Last year was the first year that I grew cantaloupes on one of these arched cattle panel trellises and I absolutely loved it. I did not have any issues with any of them getting too heavy and weighing down. It just worked out perfect. This takes up so much less real estate than it does on the ground and it just looks cleaner and neater. So this is definitely the way that I will be growing cantaloupes from here on out. And it would also work with a personal size watermelons. Once you get into anything bigger like that, I think you will have the issue of having to find something to hold it up. And if you can find something to bear the weight of it um, and to kind of straddle around it, that would be perfect. Perfect, but I did not have to do anything with these and this is definitely the way that I will go with cantaloupes from now on All down through here. We have got some squash. We've got different varieties. We've got straight neck. We've got lemon squash. We've got butternut squash And these are just really starting to take off And I just wanted to point out that this black ground cover, we have done a video on it in the past. I'll try to link that up above. Also, the link for it for Amazon will be below. We absolutely love this stuff. I can't imagine doing the garden without it now. The only issue you have is, which I've let these get pretty much out of control. There's some nice worms. Um, you'll have little pieces of grass grow up and you can see that's just a really small small spot you can't even see a hole there or anything you have some random spots like this that a weed will poke up here and there but it's very very manageable compared to without this stuff i just haven't had a chance to come through here and kind of it takes maybe five minutes to go through and, and pick it out and i just haven't put the effort into doing it yet like we've got our first bloom on this squash and this will be the last squash here all this, these are spots that I had watermelon last year. It's just where I haven't cleared them out yet. And it's just as simple as doing that. So we will have watermelon all throughout here, hopefully planted in the next week or so. Here's where we normally do our corn. We've got four rows of corn. Actually just able to get our corn planted last week because it's been raining so much. The corn was actually supposed to have been planted per the almanac and all that stuff the end of March. So fairly far behind on that, but once again, long growing season. So hopefully it'll make. See lots of corn popping up. Several spots there will have to thin out. So the varieties of tomatoes that we planted this year are the Amish paste and the Roma. And I just done a few of those because I needed them for sauces and stuff on the pantry shelf. Other than that, we just done a few of the slicers, the classic beef steak, a few Abe Lincoln's and Homestead varieties. And then I also tried a new one called the Solar Flare this year. I just, it looked pretty. So I thought I would give it a try in the garden. Here is uh, one of the two that's already had some of the leaves stripped, had some hornworm damage. They've just completely stripped a lot of this tomato. And the other one is right here beside it. You can see it's stripped all of this. We've got some cabbage here. I don't know if it will have time to make before it just gets too hot. You can see it is just now starting to form a head on it but the leaves are huge and they look great got some broccoli here and it just made some little broccoli florence that I'll just use in a salad um, the next ones are starting to go to flower already here we've got some eggplants little bit of bug issue right there another squash the cabbage this is probably the best looking cabbage I've had like I said I just don't know if it's gonna have time before it gets extremely hot to make and I believe this is the Chinese broccoli that I planted. It was supposed to be just little florins like this. It's got the white flowers uh, when it bolts instead of the yellow. 
Now we'll head over to the raised bed part of it. I've got the in ground over here, the raised bed on this side. Um, my raised beds, I'll link the video up there. These are just some raised beds that we recycled and we'll be lucky to make it through this gardening season with them. They're leaning, they're losing dirt, they're falling apart. I lean on them and they break. Uh, they're just getting really brittle, but we're hoping to make it through this garden season and then we'll put a little bit more permanent structure up. These are my hot boxes. I also have a video on when we built these. I normally try to grow some potato slips in there and this is what I've used it for this year. I've got some calendula started. few more cabbage, some broccoli, and there's nothing over here but weeds. Over here we've got our strawberries. I did not cover these this winter and I should have covered them with straw. We actually got a, a pretty harsh little spell. Normally here in Arkansas, we don't get a lot of snow or ice, maybe once every five or six years. And it was, it was our time to get it. We had, I think 10 days straight that we were like negative 10 degrees at night and didn't really warm up to be like zero during the day. Um, so I've got some gaps for the most part. My strawberries survived and everything is fine. There's just a couple of spots you can tell that I lost them, but overall, uh, these are thriving very well. Here's the void where I lost some. Incredibly juicy. So good. There is nothing like homegrown strawberries. Here where the windmill is in the corner, I will plant some sunflowers like I did last year. You can see I've still got the holes there. All I gotta do is drop the seeds down in there. And this looks really pretty once it gets sunflowers kind of interweaved in there. Here we've got our other raised bed that's made out of the old cross ties that we recycled. We just put some fresh compost in here the other day. There's nothing planted in there. On this side, we just put a fresh layer as well. I've got one cucumber plant that is surviving I plan on getting both sides here about four or five cucumber plants to grow up. The rest of this, I just think I'm going to fill it with a bunch of flowers. Last year and the year before in these two pots that has this arch trellis, I have done loofa gourds. I like planting the loofah gourds just because it's neat. It's something different. A lot of people come and they'll tour my garden and they'll always ask about those. And I kind of love explaining because uh, a lot of people just don't realize that you can grow those sponges right here in the garden. But they're pretty invasive and I don't think I'm going to put them here this year. So I'm looking for something else that is going to be really pretty. You know, this is kind of like an entrance into the raised beds. Something that climbs that's not going to be invasive to put in here. If y'all have any suggestions of what would be great and look really pretty right there, leave them in the comments and let me know. So we'll continue. On this side, I had a lot of extra pepper plants, so I just kind of stuck a few more in right here the other day. Um, this is a flower that comes back every year voluntarily on its own. Starting in the raised beds that are falling apart and when I say falling apart they are falling apart I don't know if you can tell that one is completely leaning sideways but we've got lots of different varieties of pepper plants in here see we've got some pretty bad pest pressure in here and I just continue to keep spraying I have put out the beer for slugs um, you can see we've caught a few you can see them down in there so I probably need to refresh the beer 
This is just some volunteer potatoes. Two years ago we planted potatoes in here and it just keeps volunteering back. We got some Egyptian walking onions. Now I just planted these Egyptian walking onions the other day. We were actually in town and they had these. A lady was just giving Walmart sacks of them out and I thought I would give it a try. I know I need to find a more permanent location for these because they will just keep multiplying. But for now I just stuck them in here so that way they would get established somewhere and I can move them later. If you're not familiar with the Egyptian walking onions, they make the little pearl onions that you can use in soup and different things on top. And these are looking a little rough. They're going through some transplant shock right now. These little onions they produce on top and is what happens is like this one has already done they will lean over and they will root themselves and continue so they just kind of walk all over the place hence the name walking onions Got a bed of carrots i actually overwintered these carrots i started on last fall and i just never thinned them out you can see how thick they are uh, but they're producing some carrots. We've got a bug issue that's eating on them. Just come out here every day and pull some of these for the rabbits and for the chickens because they absolutely love them. So they can take up some garden space as long as my animals are enjoying them. So we'll pick a few more to give to the animals. And we've got the different varieties there. Rainbow, I believe. And the rabbits will appreciate those in a minute. Got some more peppers and y'all I just don't know that my peppers are gonna make it I mean look at this issues they look terrible and you can see how bad of a slug problem look how many slugs are down in there got a few in it this slug problem like this this would be typical for maybe july august but not this early this i don't think i've ever even had slugs this bad in the prime of gardening season and we're just now getting started they are thick they've never been on my strawberries before and they are putting a huge hurting on my strawberries so they're just really bad this year and I'm just gonna have to completely stay on top of them or they're gonna have my whole garden destroyed. Here, this is the same bed that um, this has always been in. We have got lemon balm. And this stuff has been out for a couple months now. We've got oregano and you can see where we have cut on a lot of that. And it's just huge. This cilantro reseeded itself and I'm trying to get it to not bolt, but it's wanting to bolt pretty quick, even though I try to keep it cut down. More peppers. I had some beer in here and now it's just rainwater. So I'm trying some artichoke this year, which once again, bug problems. Um, I've never tried the artichoke, but this is the Colorado Red. As far as the pepper plants go this year, I planted the Avarsky peppers, mini bell peppers, Chinese five color, the typical jalapenos and natapinos, lots of different um, bell peppers, bull nose, yellow monster, yes to yellow, uh, just lots of different varieties of peppers this year. So that's it for inside of the garden. Um, if you're new to our channel, we had to build an eight foot tall fence because we had raccoons that were destroying our corn uh, and destroying everything in the garden. So we put up an eight foot tall fence a couple of years ago, still had an issue with the raccoons getting our corn. So we had to put a hot wire on top of that. But I think we've got it to where everything in here is pretty safe at this point. Before we go, we'll go outside of the greenhouse. I've got a few little flower bed areas and I'll show you what I've got growing in there. This completely needs weeded out. It is 
terrible looking. Some asparagus that I started from seed this year. You can see how kind of light and feathery that is. And then somewhere amongst all these weeds is some second year asparagus that I had to cut off because it was starting to get a little woody. Um, there's several of them throughout there. So it's just a matter of getting this under control. I've got a few green onions back here amongst the weeds. You can see and something is eating them off as well. Garlic, I cut the scapes off the other day. Um, the elephant garlic, you can see just how much bigger it is compared to the other, but it'll just be a few more weeks and we'll be harvesting that. So this is a comfrey I transplanted uh, from the lake last year. It is doing really well. The flowers on it are attracting the bees quite nicely. I got a lot of this soaking for salves in the house already. Got a lamb's ear. And then on this side of, this is the front porch area. Um, up here you can see these were where we kept the greenhouse vented. These open. And then we would just prop them up with these sticks here. But Levi actually trenched an electric line from the shop the other day. He was having some electrical issues and needed to take care of it. And while he did, he trenched. It's not hooked up to anything, but I'm going to have electric in there. So we'll be able to put a good ventilation system up there. Over here, we've got some rosemary, some more lemon balm that I just cut off of the one in there on the raised bed. Lots more comfrey, a little daylily flower, and some more lamb's ear. This stuff is just so neat to touch. You know it's time for your afternoon snack, don't you, Miss Luna? Huh? Well, that's all for the garden tour today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Make sure you stick around so that way you can see how my garden progresses throughout the summer. It's going to be amazing. Uh, all the different changes right now. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but just stay tuned and you will see so much difference in the following garden tour videos to come. Bye y'all. We hope to catch you on the next one.